This is Howard Ryan Gold, and we're, we're talking with the, the crew for power brokers building social capital through connected learning. So uh, why don't we start out by introducing yourselves. Um, start with you, Dixie. Hi, everyone. I'm Dixie Ching. I'm a doctoral candidate at uh, New York University in the Educational Communication and Technology program. Mimi? Sure. Hi, I'm Mimi Ito. I'm at UC Irvine. I'm faculty and also research director of the Digital Media and Learning Hub. Philip? Hi, I'm Philip Bell, uh, faculty at the University of Washington in our Learning Sciences and Human Development program, and I direct, uh, co-direct the Learning and Informal and Formal Environments Life Center. Well, uh, let's, let's talk about what you plan to do in your session and what people should expect and what you're excited about. You want to start, Dixie? <laughs> sure. Um, well, uh, so I can just start by saying um, I'm, I should have also said earlier I'm part of a uh, research group called the High Research Lab. Uh, the other members are um, Kylie Pepler, Chris Hoadley, and uh, my project lead and uh, partner in crime, Rafi Santo. And we're part of a research practice partnership uh, with the Mozilla Hive NYC Learning Network. It's a community of after-school providers in New York City, over 70 members. And um, through our work, um, we, had, we were talking to members about a very uh, important issue uh, that uh, they were interested in around supporting young people beyond just the window of their program. And uh, in doing so, we collected a lot of examples of uh, strategies they were using to do that and also difficulties they had in terms of being able, being able to connect young people to a certain opportunity or recommending them for, for an internship or even knowing if there was something that would fit with a young person or, or recommending something to a young person and then finding out later on that even though that would have been the perfect opportunity, next step for them, the young person didn't pursue it. So we um, realized that this was uh, in the literature, you know, um, it could it, it aligned with this idea of brokering uh, future learning opportunities. Uh, Bridget Barron has talked about that in terms of um, uh, an important parental role uh, to build digital fluency. And so then we uh, we continued in our research practice partnership model to uh, have more conversations around that uh, through community meetups and through calls, and that resulted in a community white paper that um, we shared uh, with the larger DML community. And I, I think it gained some con uh, traction. And I think it caught Mimi Ito's eye. And uh, uh, Mimi then invited me to be part of this um, workshop, which I'm really excited about. And also, it's such an honor to be with these other amazing co-organizers. Um, so uh, perhaps I can give it over to Mimi or Phil to continue talking about what's exciting about this workshop. <laughs> Mimi, what are, yeah. you, what are your hopes for this? What do you, you hope a good outcome would be? Yeah, so I think in addition to sort of the substantive research and kind of findings and practice that Dixie just outlined, uh, you know, it's a really uh, exciting moment where we're seeing a lot of these findings about the importance of building connections for young people across organizations as bubbling up across a wide range of research projects and design research. Uh, so there's stuff happening in DML as well as stuff that, you know, folks like Phil and Bridget have been doing for many, many years around this sort of cross-context brokering. But it feels like we're kind of at this uh, tipping point a bit where these uh, findings are coming across a wide range of research communities and uh, coalescing into a set of exciting new programmatic changes. So what we're hoping to do with this workshop is really catalyze the conversation so that we can build a stronger and more, more robust bridges across uh, different research groups, but also across research and practice. And <clears throat> we're really hoping that we'll get some 
participants to the workshop who are part of our long-standing DML community as well as a much broader range of educational practitioners and researchers because it does seem like there's this really interesting moment of coalescing. Uh, the other part, which is sort of, I'll put on my hat as one of the DML conference organizers, is this workshop in particular, as well as all of the pre-conference workshops on the day before DML, we're trying to uh, experiment with a new model of uh, sessions and formats for the conference. And so this workshop is really the first of its kind for DML, where it's a whole day session where people have to apply and you're pre-selected, and it's a very kind of tight, integrated, almost mini symposium that precedes the conference on a very focused uh, problem in research and practice that we think is very uh, important and at a critical time for our field. And so unlike the main conference, which is also awesome, and everybody should also apply to that, uh, this is more of a working session, which will be designed like as a mini symposium with presentations and discussion, where we'll have an outcome which will be sort of an online published proceedings, as well as uh, for people who want to apply for a, uh, to submit a, a more extended paper that we will be uh, curating a special issue uh, for the uh, Journal of, uh, International Journal of Learning and Media that is going to be relaunching in about the time frame that we hope to have the special issue together. So this is also a really uh, hopefully interesting and exciting new format for participants in DML. Uh, and finally, I'll just echo what Dixie said about, you know, the co-organizers for this workshop are also, you know, folks who have been doing a lot of work in this area for a long time, represent different organizations and research groups. So being able to work with Dixie and Phil and Bridget Barron, who couldn't be on our call today, uh, is also a really great opportunity, I think, for us as an organizing team to start getting our frameworks to speak to each other a little bit more. Sounds like a parallel social capital building among practitioners who want to build social capital among. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we we're eating our own dog food, so, yeah. Philip? Sure. I, I mean, I think um, Mimi and Dixie have really kind of put uh, a lot of the details on the table. Um, I think what was exciting to me, I was at a national conference last year actually talking with Dixie in a session where there was a lot of DML work um, kind of represented. and. Um, what was striking to me is that there were maybe 10 different research groups at that conference talking about cultural learning pathways. So extended learning across settings um, over you know, longer periods of time and trying to understand how interest and identity and expertise come together across these longer pathways. And I was struck by like the need for the field to have that shared conversation about like, okay, so we have slightly different ways of understanding these dynamics that youth are on. Like, like what is kind of a synthetic view of that that we can come you know together around, but then also like map out the next phase of the work to try to to bring it out more broadly. I, I think what was striking, you know, speaking from the point of view of the Life Center where we've looked at learning across settings over the last decade, you know. Learning cross settings as an agenda is primarily about equity and social justice. And so if you think about like who has access to kind of coordinated experiences across settings to build their social capital, to build expertise and identities that help them travel further into pursuits of their own interests, like that that's something that we need to figure out how to democratize access to and how to support. Um, kind of at broader scale for youth who otherwise might not have as easy a time, you know, getting connected to their next powerful learning opportunity. So I'm, I'm totally excited to kind of come together with other people that have been on this shared endeavor and, you know, try to get a sense of what we actually know at this point and what can we come, you know, to work on together and, and what future work do we still need to do. Wonderful. Good, good luck and, and have fun. And, and thanks, thanks for taking the time.